Hi, this is JM. Today we're going to learn how to farm Chia in Windows. So I have a shiny, fresh install of Windows 11 here. And you're going to head on over to Chia.net and click on Download. Now, if you typically you would download the, the latest version, I'm going to show you a beta version that is a little bit faster uh, for getting started because the light, new Light Wallet is able to sync uh, almost instantly and allows you to do a transaction very quick so you can get a mojo from the faucet and we're going to create our first plot nft which we're going to need to start uh, plotting so what we're going to do here i downloaded the file I'm going to go to downloads and click on the chia setup we're going to double click and let it install and it's going to pop up here now the new version will give you a wallet mode or a farming mode so if you're going to be plotting and farming Chia, obviously you want the farming mode. If you're just going to download the Chia app to basically send transactions and trade, you can go download the wallet mode. Uh, and this has the new, what we call the new light wallet protocol that allows the, uh, app, the transactions to sync much, much faster than it did before. So if we go to farming mode, we can click on farming mode. And it's going to ask you a little Windows firewall defender thing or whatever. If you have some other kind of antivirus or firewall, it's going to ask you, do you want to allow these incoming connections for a full node? Uh, and you're going to have to say yes for the full node and the farmer, because these are both going to be services that need the network access. And so it's going to ask us, do we want to import a key? So if you had a 24 word seed already, you could import and you could type them in here. Uh, if you want to basically create a new key, we're just going to say create a new private key. It's going to give us these 24 words. Now, at this point in time, you will take a piece of paper and a pen and write these down in this order. Uh, what I'm going to do, and don't ever do this, is Windows Shift S. And I'm going to take a screenshot. Uh, this is not a good idea because now you have it stored somewhere. Um, but for this is just a test, so I'm just going to here store it here uh, on, on my desktop. But don't do this. <laughs> you want to write these down because that is much, much more secure than ever having a, a file with, with these. So we're going to go to next. And here we go. So uh, I happen to not prefer the um, light mode. I like prefer the dark mode because I like my eyes. Um, but here we go. So what's going to happen is when you start the uh, wallet for the first time, it's going to actually start to try to find a full node. So remember, this is a fully peer-to-peer -peer blockchain. So you're going to see down here in the connections, the application is actually going to connect to other random peers. Uh, Chia is what you call Nakamoto consensus. So there is no trusted node. We just reach out to a bunch of different nodes, find out who has the longest chain, and we start syncing from there. And you can see here, all these nodes happen to have very close height. Height is the total number of blocks in the blockchain. 1, 1,519,198. Okay, so three nodes have this. Okay, one node's at 200. So you'll see very quickly, now we know how to trust different peers on the network. And so the, the blockchain application is going to start syncing. It's just going to start downloading these blocks from these trusted blockchains and try to sync. And we're going to rebuild the entire blockchain from scratch. Uh, so what's going to happen now is this wallet is going to allow us to uh, basically um, make a transaction because we're going to need to do one transaction to start plotting. So we're going to go to Chia Faucet and I believe uh, it's just faucet.chia.net and we're going to type in our wallet address here. So you're going to click uh, copy to clipboard uh, for your receive address and you're going to go into this faucet and paste the wallet address. Now alternatively if you have another account or a friend that can send you a few uh, mojos which you know, a mojo is one trillionth of a chia. Um, you need to make a small transaction to actually start farming to create your first plot. And we're gonna learn about creating something called a plot NFT. Now, the, the reason why you need one mojo to do a plot NFT, uh, taxis. Does that look like a taxi? Uh, I don't think so. Traffic light, that is definitely a traffic light. Uh, so you need one mojo to do this transaction. So this allows you to change pools if you want to later. And this is really interesting because the pool protocol on Chia is done all on chain. So you don't have to basically pick a pool and be stuck with that for life. And be, when you're making the plots, you basically tie your plot NFT to the plots that you're making. And then you can point that plot NFT at any pool you want and all the rewards will go from all the plots that you have with that plot NFT. 
uh, will go to that pool, uh, the, that pool and then the pool will pay out whatever receive address that you pick. All right, we're back. You can see the blockchain is still syncing. Um, this typically takes around a day on a high-end desktop, maybe two days on a kind of lower-end machine to fully sync. Um, you can, if you already have another machine synced, copy the database. Now, if you install the latest version, uh, Chia 1.3 will actually have a new version of the database, this V2 database, so you will actually have to sync that from scratch. Uh, so we're going to go into our wallets tab here and you can see our Chia has showed up. You can see we have a very, very small amount of Chia that has showed up uh, from the faucet. And we're going to go to the pool tab. And so the first thing you do when you're plotting, you have to basically create what's called a plot NFT and this will allow you to create your plots. Now you can do a self pool and then join a pool later or you can connect to a pool. So we're just going to do a self pool. We're going to say zero fee and we're going to create. And so we're going to let this sit for a sec. This actually has to send a transaction to the blockchain and have it be confirmed uh, because we're going to have this plot NFT that is very unique to us that we're going to use to generate the plots. So we'll just wait here for a sec while this gets confirmed. All right. So the transaction confirmed and you can see our plot NFT is called Aqua Beetle. It just gets a random name, so don't be confused there. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is, that, so this is the payout address. This is uh, one of the addresses that our wallet owns. So the pool will pay out to that address. And you have a launcher ID that's just part of um, your, uh, if you wanted to look at your pool stats on another pool. Now, if you wanted to join a pool, um, again, there's Space Pool. I use Pool Chia, there's Flex Pool. Um, there's a bunch of different pools, so you're going to have to go to chiapool.directory or mining pool stats has a bunch of the uh, the pools on here. Um, so choose what you wish, uh, but we can join one later. We don't need to join a pool yet because we're just going to start creating plots. So if we click on plots, we know we're not going to see anything yet because we don't have any plots yet. Um, so in the farm tab or plots tab, you're going to see uh, a place to add a plot. So what we're going to do is add a plot and it's going to give you a drop down of three different options, uh, Chia Proof of Space, Blaybit, or Mad Max. Now, as of today, uh, for most people are going to be using Mad Max on their kind of desktop systems. Uh, Chia Proof of Space was the original uh, plotter, which has a little bit more capabilities for higher K values if you're interested in doing like really high plot size sizes. But for the most part, people are going to be using Mad Max. Um, and when you choose your plot size, um, k equals 32 is the default. So a plot size is determined by the k value because the uh, number of entries per table in each of these uh, plots for the proof of space has a 2 to the k value uh, for the entries per table. So as, as you get to bigger, you can see when you go from k equals 32 to 33, you go from 101.4 GIB or 108 gigabytes to 208.8 GIB. So a little bit more than 2x when you increase the k value. Uh, but for the most part, k equals 32 is the minimum. k equals 25 is just for test. It's not for mainnet. You can't use those on the mainnet. You have to use at least k equals 32. So k equals 32 is the default. We're going to do one plot, and we're going to say number of threads. This is an 8-core machine, so generally you want to say number of threads for Mad Max, whatever the number of cores are for the machine. Um, the buckets you can leave as the default, and then... Um, that's it. Uh, so when we want to do our pool, we're gonna select down here, Aqua Beetle. That was the, the plot NFT we made. Um, one of the things that we're going to do is uh, if you wanted to plot using a different uh, pool key or a public key, you could do that. By default, it just uses the address that we made in the beginning. Uh, so that's good. We're gonna to wanna to use that because it's the one we're gonna farm with. A temporary directory. So. Here, we're just going to, uh, I, I just have this um, as one machine with one disk. Uh, you can see here, I just have one C drive, that's two terabytes. So what I can do is I can go to desktop and make a directory called temp. Now, generally you're gonna want a, another SSD for your temporary storage because um, if you're doing a lot of plotting, Chia takes a lot of writes and you're gonna wanna buy a dedicated SSD that has high terabytes written or total amount of bytes that you can write to the, the device before it wears out. That's called the SSD endurance. And we have lots of picks for nice cheap SSDs that we recommend for Chia plotting, uh, like use data center SSD. But if you're just making a couple of plots for tests, it's certainly happy to do on your own uh, machine. 
but just make sure you give it a separate folder so you don't get things all messed up if something fails and you have to restart the plot for some reason. And then we're gonna give it a new folder called final. And so for a temp directory, we're gonna say, we're gonna select that for a temp and then select final. We're gonna select this final. Uh, again, typically you'd want these on different drives. If you were in Windows, you can use, you can type in disk manager. On Windows 11, it's gonna bring up this disk management tab. And if you plug in new hard drives, they'll show up here and you can format them to NTFS and give them a drive letter and then that'll make it so they show up here when you go select your final directory. So in, in this case, I just have my one drive here that I'm making a test plot. This is generally not recommended. Generally, you want to have a hard drive like a USB drive or a SATA hard drive that is dedicated for cheap plotting or if you do have an external hard drive that you're using for data storage, you want to put some plots on there, it'll show up as a separate drive. Uh, so here we are, uh, we have our plot, we're gonna hit create and uh, this may take a little bit extra time because the full node is syncing in the background. You remember, if we remember, um, this is gonna take a couple days. This takes some CPU power to sync. Uh, so the plots are probably not going to be so fast, but on an eight core machine with a standard data center SSD or consumer SSD, NVMe SSD, you're probably going to be somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes for a plot. If you're on an older machine, it's probably going to be like, you know, a little over an hour. So uh, that's kind of the typical standard time. But for now, now, now we just we just wait. Now, if you wanted to, if you had a whole drive to fill up, you would on the number of plots before on that other screen, you would select, you know, high number. It would just do do them. And after it makes one plot, it would do them in general, uh, do them in sequence and, and just create them. But we can view the log here. And we can see, look, uh, this plot has started plotting and it's using number of threads, eight, working directory, final directory. And you can see if we go to the temp directory and click this, you can see a bunch of temporary files. It's, it's creating a bunch of buckets. Uh, it's gonna do this chia plotting and sorting. And so chia plotting actually takes a while. Remember, this is kind of one of the harder parts to chia, but once you have it figured out and you have a system that's all set up for plotting, all you have to do is basically click create plots and let this do it in the background. If you want to do this overnight, that's certainly like the best way to do it is if you have a machine that you use for gaming, you can just click the, the button and it will make some plots overnight. So uh, now we're going to wait until this plot is done and then we're going to take a peek after that and uh, see what we can do. Hello, we are back and I made a few plots to test with Mad Max. If you go in here to the farm tab, it's going to uh, refresh here once the farmer service starts and it's going to show me my plots. You can see here in the final directory, uh, I just made four different plots. You can see here um, they are 101.3 GIB, which is 108 gigabytes or 106 <laughs> million uh, kilobytes. <laughs> so I think this thing uh, kind of throws people off. It's just a unit conversion. But if you look at now the full node syncing, you know, we're still not there yet. We're at 227,000 blocks versus the 1.5 million blocks that have been produced. Um, we're actually not going to be able to farm uh, until we uh, have the rest of uh, the uh, database synced for the full node. So uh, I'm going to do something here in a minute and cheat and we'll, we will uh, actually copy a full copy of the database so we can get going faster. But so here we are. Um, if, if you're for some reason, um, this looks like it should come up. It's syncing. Uh, we, we do have, it says manage plot directories. Um, okay, so now it's, now it's coming up. It just, the harvester service had to load for a minute, which is why these weren't coming up. You can see here, I have the four plots that we made uh, and it says syncing. So we can't farm until the database is fully synced. Now, I mentioned typically this will take a day or two depending on how fast your system is. Uh, there's a way to cheat. If you have a, another full node, you can basically copy the database over. Now you should not trust downloading a database from like random third parties. I synced this database on, on another node of my own system and I'm gonna copy it over. That's totally okay. So first thing we have to do is enable hidden files. So I just, in Windows type hidden, hidden, which says show hidden files and system settings. And if you go show settings, show hidden files, now we can go into the Chia folder. So where your actual stuff is located is in C, users, whatever your username is, and you go to .chia. 
So if anything ever happens bad to your system, you can kind of nuke this uh, nuke this folder and kind of reset. Uh, your keys are actually stored in the keychain for the OS. So when you nuke this folder, if you do delete it, uh, your keys won't get deleted. So if you just want it to start fresh, for instance. But we're going to go into here in database, and you can see it's started to sync this database file. Uh, we're going to delete that, and we're just going to copy in a new one because this one is more up to date. This is uh, 26, uh, or I guess something like that, 26 gigabytes uh, or around, where is the full database with the V2 uh, schema. So now we're going to start up Chia again and let this load for a second. All right, so our trick worked. Uh, when we synced it up, it was almost a full database and it only took a few seconds to get synced up because we copied it from a known good source, my own source. I remember you don't wanna be using uh, a database file from somebody else. But now that we're synced, you can see here we are fully farming. We are basically farming. You could basically look in the full node and you can find um, you know the the blocks being created if you look at uh, the farm tab you can see uh, for every challenge that you get for every uh, basically every time there's a signage point which is i think 9.375 seconds something like that uh, there is a new challenge and basically you can check all your plots and then there's a one in five twelve chance that your plot will pass the filter if it passes the filter you can do a proof quality check and if your proof is the uh, under the target for the difficulty for that uh, for for the day uh, for the epoch, then you can win a block. So and then you find a proof, and then you if you find a proof in your solo farming, you win two chia as a reward. Zero point two five go to the farmer, and zero and one point seven five goes to the pool. If you're a solo farmer, those are owned by yourself, and you get both of them. If you're in a pool and you win a block, you get the two point five as a reward, and you have to send the one point seven five to the pool and then they distribute that amongst the entire pool.